you are doing good. I'm going to sit here and just talk with you. And uh, like I said, you are the drivers. You're everything. And I'm not going to give you a pat political speech because I really don't know how to do that. But uh, again, I congratulate you. I'm one of you in every way imaginable. You know, uh, not only am I West Virginian, but my family, you know, we owe everything we have to the energy sector of our great state. Now, before I get into all this, I'd like to update you a little bit on the state of West Virginia. You know, this sounds braggadocious, and I don't want it to be that way, but, uh, but I don't know how to, how to tell you anything other than to just tell you the truth. You know, when I walked into office two years ago, like it or not like it, but when the books were shoved in front of me, we were dead flat bankrupt. There's no other way around it. Absolutely nowhere to turn, if you just think about it. We had already pulled all the money we could possibly pull out of rainy day without having our bonds derated, and they were derated. Now, in addition to that, all the low-hanging fruit gone. What are you going to do? Where are you going to turn? You know, you tried over and over and over from the gas perspective on co-tenancy and joint development, and it rang a lot on deaf ears. Nowhere to turn. You know how you battled throughout through this state in all kinds of bad roads and tearing vehicles all to pieces, and again, nowhere to turn. So we had to come up with an idea. And what happened within this state, and I, I say this from the standpoint that I'm a Christian through and through. My values are grounded. But what happened within the state of West Virginia, like it or not like it, is a blooming miracle. A miracle from God. If you look at our books today compared to the day that I walked in the door, it's unbelievable. Now, it is truly unbelievable. You know, today, all the nasty red numbers are gone. We had to come up with an idea to create instantaneous jobs. Well, I knew it back in the campaign. A way to do that was the roads. A way to have an instant job is let all the jobs, let all the road jobs that we have on the books tomorrow. That was the whole concept, and I really thought, well, what would it cost to do that? Well, it basically, way back in the campaign, you know, and I, I couldn't come out and say this because it sounds like you're levying a tax on everybody. But what it had to come, what it really worked out to mathematically was $125 for every living, breathing human in West Virginia. And if we could some way come up with that, and bond it, we could put it into a financial instrument and let those jobs, let, let all the road jobs that we have on the books designed and everything go. And if we let them go, as soon as we let them go, we would create all this gigantic avalanche of jobs. Now what else would that do? It would, it would send a message almost to the world that West Virginia was trying to crawl out of its economic woes and do something. The other thing is just this, is we put a stake in the sand that we were absolutely put education as our centerpiece. We put that stake right in the sand. Right from day one, I believed that. And then, contrary to what a lot of people may think, the Republicans are the ones that stepped up. They're the ones that really and truly stepped up and did what we did in regard to the teacher's pay raise, to everybody's pay raise, to all the commitment to education. They're the ones, whether you buy it or not buy it. I am solely, period, the end, the sole person that came up with the 5%. Nobody did. 
And the Republicans got a lot of grief because the teachers, through their right, they stood up because they had they felt like they had, well, they had. They had been unappreciated for a long, long, long time. And so they stood up. And then there was people, the politicians, that jumped on the bandwagon and ran up and down the hall for raw raw. But what did they deliver? They didn't deliver anything. The politicians didn't deliver anything. The people, the teachers, good people, stood up and voiced their voice. Now, I've got no problem whatsoever with that. I think that was fine and good. At the end of the day, though, we as West Virginia on a national scene had done two great things. We had said we're committed to education. We had said we're going to do something with the roads. We had sent a message to the outside world that we're not dark and dingy and ignorant and backward. We're really something different than what they had thought. And then, like it or not like it, all the things that come to pass or started to come to pass, we have four beautiful seasons. We're abound in natural resources beyond belief. We're a natural resource state. And for God's sake to live, we should be proud of that. So proud. Think of the gas and the oil and the coal and the timber and the water. Think about what we have in West Virginia, and we should be damn proud of who we are and what we have. Four most beautiful seasons on the planet. We're located within a rock's throw of two thirds of the population of our state, of, of our nation. And in addition to all that, we've got the greatest people in the land. Why don't we stand up for what we got and what we have? We're the winningest team on the planet. We don't need to be last. We don't need to be anywhere close to last. The winningest team on the planet. Now. Let's talk just a second about gas. Like I said a few minutes ago, we were able to get co-tendency through. It's been a while, and it's been an effort and everything. And all the great gas people that are here, and I think that we produced like 1.6 trillion cubic feet last year. You know, that, if I'm, if I'm right in what I said, I know that the gas production in our state was up like 21.6% over the previous year. What you're doing in, within the gas industry is unbelievable. 38,000 jobs, I think, are attributed to gas. 38,000 jobs. I mean, can you just fathom what that is and what that means to West Virginia? It's unbelievable. And it could even be greater. The numbers could continue to grow and become even greater. One thing we need, one challenge that we have right in front of us is just this. We want so badly to have the conversion of that natural gas within West Virginia into other manufactured products. We need to achieve that. We'll get that done. At the end of the day, we'll get that done. You just wait and see. We're still a little ways away, but you just wait and see if we don't get this natural gas hub, crackers, we'll get that done. We're a lot closer than you know, and there's, we're a lot closer than I can actually tell you today. Again, we abound in this incredible resource. Many of you right in this room, think just, think just about this just for a second. We awakened in West Virginia to horizontal, horizontal drilling and a resource that none of us ever could have imagined 40 years ago, 30 years ago. And I could be wrong in the timetable, but none of us could have imagined it. You know, now, it's a gift, again, from God above, and we absolutely need to capitalize on that beyond belief. Now, time, as time goes forward, the opportunities, honestly, are limitless. 
And we absolutely need to know, you need to know, that I'm only here for one reason. I'm only here for one reason. I am not a politician. I am only here for the reason of just this. I can't stand West Virginia to be 50. I can't stand us to have the drug epidemic that we have. What's, what is the scar to solving the drug epidemic? I can't stand to see our families fragmented and all over the country in Atlanta and Denver and everywhere else because they had to leave to go get a job. I can't stand to see us not diversified in our economy, whether it be our natural resources or tourism or higher ed or high tech or whatever it may be. How do you think all that's going to happen? It's going to happen by a job. It's going to happen by hope. It's going to happen by people that are not politicians, that are business people, that understand you and are trying to help you in every way that we possibly can. That's all there is to it. You have a president of the United States Lots of you here may absolutely think, well, Donald is just, you know, there's times he says something, you know, we're not really all fired up about it. There's other times he says everything we want to hear. I'm telling you, he's a great friend of mine. You have a, you have a governor, what are the odds of having a governor of the state of West Virginia that's a Republican? A Republican president. What are the odds of those two being tremendous friends today in West Virginia? I am telling you, you probably, had a, you probably never had a governor that could ever pick up the phone and call the President of the United States and give an answer. And I can tell you a lot of funny stories about Donald Trump, but I can tell you he's a business guy, and he wants the same thing that I want. The exact same thing. Let me comment on one other thing really quickly here, and that's your pipeline, the MVP. MVP. You know, you surely have, you surely become, as rightfully you should, very frustrated from the standpoint of all the, the federal litigation and all the, the federal problems that are going on with the core and everything else in regard to crossing the streams and all that. Now in West Virginia, in all honesty, we have to protect our streams and we have to be supportive of protecting our environment in any way. Now it's kind of out of our arena because it's with the it's with the Fed and it's with the core and it's a little out of our arena, but there is no reason, there is no reason whatsoever that this can't be solved. All we're, and you know, you know from the standpoint of our DEP what we want. That pipeline is vital not only to West Virginia, but it's vital to our country. We know that. We absolutely know that. And we're supportive of trying any and every way we possibly can, up to the point of damaging our water or our environment. We don't want that. We don't want that. And I know you don't either. That's the thing that people, the general public, never is able to get. I bet all I have in the world that there's nobody with any gas company that would absolutely just trash our environment or trash our water for an extra buck. I know you're not. I know you don't want to do that. We've got to solve that. And I can promise you just this. As soon as we get some level of res resolution from the core, you'll have a very supportive DEP in West Virginia that will fall in line just like that. Guaranteed. Now, let me switch channels just real quick because I want you to remember the first things that I said about our state. It will all tie together in just a second. You know, if I could switch for those of you that are in the room that are in the coal business or some way related back to coal, you know, there's the Charleston Gazette was gracious enough to say coal will never come back, it's dead forevermore, boom, 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 day, and lo and behold, look what we have happened. You know, now, I think our coal production today is running at a pace of about 95 million tons. 
At one time in the state of West Virginia, we mined 181 million tons. There's a lot, a lot of upside still to go. You know, from the standpoint of steam coal prices, steam coal prices, I think, are a little bit above $77 a ton. They've risen from $32 or $34 up to a level of $77 plus. Absolutely, there's, there's more coal jobs out there today than we can possibly fill with people. And you face the same challenge in the gas industry as well. It's a good problem to have. It is a fabulous problem to have. I said our families were fragmented. We're bringing people back. We're putting people, West Virginia families, back together every day. You couldn't have a better situation. The metallurgical coal market is running off a chart. So our higher quality net seams and everything are in world demand like nobody's business. So the outlook from the standpoint of gas, great. The outlook from the standpoint of coal, great. Will it stay that way forevermore? I hope and pray it will. But in addition to all that, I would just tell you just this. We have to make the right moves politically to assure that all that will stay that way. Now, let me kind of wrap this thing to some level of ending. You're kind enough to have it. I want to tell you just as straightforward as I can possibly tell you. You know, whether it be a gas job, whether it be a coal job, whether it be whatever job that's related to our natural resources, to you, to our energy, I said just a second ago, the bottom line to the whole thing is West Virginia is an energy state. Now, I said this, gosh, the time goes and the hair gets whiter and falls out more. But I said this years and years and years ago. I said, you know, why is it that a corn farmer in Iowa is so proud that he's a corn farmer. And the state is so proud of their natural resource and being a corn, a corn state. You know, why is it that at that time, which was a long, long time ago, that a person that's working in the oil business in Houston, Texas, and Texas was so proud of their industry, at the time, we didn't have any clue whatsoever. This was years ago, decades ago. We didn't have any clue about horizontal drilling or Marcellus or whatever it may be. We had no clue. But at the time in West Virginia, if you'd have walked the streets and you'd have run into a coal miner and you would have had somebody on the outside say, what do you think of that guy? Or a coal operator, and he said, what do you think of that guy? It wouldn't have been good. Why? Why should we in West Virginia not be proud beyond belief of our natural resources and who we are? Absolutely, we've got to do that. Because you see what I said just earlier, all of a sudden with the roads or education or our commitment to vets or whatever it may be that we've done, all of a sudden, our image on the outside is really changing. Really changing. Now, you've got a guy here that is damn well proud of our natural resources. Damn well proud that we're an energy state. And that's the way I want to be. And I want to try to help you any way and every way I possibly can to let the world know just how, how vital and how important West Virginia is to the world. To the world. The highest quality metallurgical coal on the planet. A terrific, you know, what was a stable to the steam industry from the standpoint of low sulfur, high BTU steam coal. The absolute most abundant, maybe cheapest natural gas, maybe, that we know of anywhere. Absolutely, that's West Virginia. That's us. Now, 
At the end of the day, I'm going to try to throw a little bit of wisdom, maybe, your way. Think about this just for a second. You know, I mentioned this to Pam, my executive assistant on the way up here. But I said, you know, I, I really am intrigued by wisdom. And I love it when I stumble upon something that makes me a little smarter. You know, I think that's what we should strive to do all the time is just get better and more knowledgeable because we don't have all the answers in any way. You see, if you were to ask me today, Jim, what do you think, Jim, what do you, Jim, think is the most best characteristic that Jim has? I'd really surprise you. If you were to say, Jim, what do you think is your best characteristic that you have in life? You know what it would be? It would be the ability to doubt myself. You know, I may come off as a confident guy, or I may come off with a lot of experience, a good communicator, or all that kind of all that kind of stuff, but really and truly, my ability to doubt myself and question myself, I think, is my greatest resource. You know, because I'm constantly learning and I'm constantly saying to myself, you don't know what you're talking about about this, and I'm going to get somebody like you to educate me, to help me. That's what I do. So, on the wisdom side, if I could just tell you just this, boy, this thing is hard at times. <laughs> you know, but it's strong. I got it. You know. But on the wisdom side, you know, I'm a high school basketball coach too. And oftentimes I think about those kids and I say, you know, they're just little kids. Whether they be boys or girls, they're just kids. How can this possibly be important? Well, what's the definition of importance? Most generally, it's something we have a lot of interest in, and the other thing is we're, the one thing that we're willing to do is give the most important ingredient that we have in life, and that is give our time to. That's my feeling of what, what really is truly important. But just think about this, in Green Park County, West Virginia, Lewisburg has a population of 6,000 people, and in the middle of January, when it's 8 degrees outside and 15 inches of snow on the ground, and it's dark, and it's cold, and the roads are slick, 1,500 of those 6,000 people will get on their boots and their clothes, and they'll go to a place and pay to see those kids play. So all of a sudden, it is important. It's important to community, and it's important to those kids. It's important to our state, and it's happening all over the place. Now let me take it one step even further that is kind of bizarre in a lot of ways, but today, our cable networks are 24-7 with news, supposedly, all the time, and most all the time, they are occupied with some level of politics. How can it be? How can it possibly be? I mean, really? Isn't there something to talk about on this planet other than politics all the time? Now, some of it's a sideshow. There's no question about that, but going back to my definition, it must be of interest to one hell of a lot of people. And it must be something that those people are willing to give of their time to watch and do. So this fact, the way I see it, there is for all, for all practical purposes, there is a real reason to, to believe that politics is enormously important, enormously important to everybody, to everybody. Now again, I'm not a politician. I'm just the guy that's sitting here and talking to you. 
And I'm just a guy that's always going to tell you the truth. And I'm a guy that will make mistakes, but I'm a guy that will tell you the truth. Now, if I could switch channels and just tell you just this. Today, I started out by telling you, and I jotted down a few notes on the way up here. See, I don't have a speech. I'm just, I, I am just sitting and telling you from my heart everything I can possibly tell you about your industry, about our state, about what's going on, about a little bit of wisdom. So here it all ties together, at least it ties together to me. Our state, as I let off by saying, our state is killing it today. Compared to where we were two years ago, we're killing it. I don't care who you are, when you look at the books and you look at the performance of what's going on in the state, and the surpluses just keep coming and get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And before you know it, this little state that everybody thought was dingy and dark and dirty and ignorant and everything else is now becoming the diamond in the rough and it's becoming exactly what I wanted it to be. Exactly what I knew it was. Exactly what many of y'all already knew. The problem is the outside world didn't know. Now they do. They'll know more tomorrow than they know today. So, if you'll pick that little tidbit and just go from there. Think. Think about just this. Then, along the way, I talked about your gas and I talked about your coal and I talked about things that were happening within this state and how we should be proud to be an energy state. And we are. I truly am, anyway. And your government should be super proud of that. And we are. And I'm going to see to that that it's going to be that way. And then I sprinkled in the wisdom. So here you have the state, real quick, that's doing great. You have our energy sector that we should be super proud of that's doing a lot better. And the upside is unlimited as to where we can go and how important we are. I would say to you just this in every way. And then I'll quit. You are the kingpins of our state. You are the drivers. You know, right now, we do have a perfect storm. And we need you. I need you. Right now, we all need you. Nobody on the planet can be more proud. Nobody on the planet can be more willing to help in any way I possibly can. And I'll never change that. I'll leave you by saying, God bless you for all the great work you do. Hold your heads the proudest and the highest that you can hold them. Be proud of the fact that you are an energy producer from West Virginia. Be proud of who we are in every way. I know you are, but the world's got to know that absolutely we have put our stake in the sand. Again, I thank you for having me. I got here right on time. I didn't even have to run too awful much. I want you to enjoy all the, the, your interaction and your learning with one another. And uh, let's just keep moving in the direction we're moving. Gas, 21.6%. Coal's on fire. So many things moving the right way within West Virginia. We're, we're looking forward to the next announcement of a cracker coming. So many things that absolutely have been with just out of our reach. They're within our reach now. We're right around the corner from the next great announcement. Honestly and true, our state is moving and, ro and rolling at a pace that I've said it over and over. Once it reaches the critical mass, and don't, don't think that this is a critical mass, but, but once it reaches a critical mass, you won't be able to stop the goodness. Thank you for having me. God bless you.